Hey Fosters, um, Michael Fitzgerald here, the Fasting Atheist. Um, as I um, let you know yesterday in that, um, my report from bed, um, I was feeling very poorly day six. Today, day seven, I took myself off to the doctor because the nausea was just getting more constant, in fact, without any let up whatsoever. Um, it was my first uh, mm, consultation with the doc with any doctor about the fast, and I was reluctant to actually fess up to my local GP because I knew that she would not be um, well disposed to the idea. In fact, as you will know, uh, guys, um, anyone who's joined recently and who has perhaps tried to consult their GP, you have to be very lucky to find a GP, a uh, doctor, MD, MD in America, we call them GPs here, general practitioner, um, who will back you on this. In fact, usually you have to go to a centre, a fasting centre, where um, you pay a shitload of money and uh, you're monitored on a daily basis, I think, and on a weekly basis or thereabouts, a whole battery of blood tests would be done so that they could monitor um, just how your body's reacting. And of course, in one of those centers, before you even began the fast, they would assess you as to um, your suitability um, as a candidate for a long fast. So, because I neither have the resources to go to a centre, nor a doctor who is sympathetic to uh, fasting, and as I live in a remote part of northern New South Wales, in a little country town, um, I had no choice but to just go it alone. So today, when I went to the doctor, um, the doctor uh, and told her that I'd been, I was into uh, day seven into a fast. She ticked me off uh, on the grounds that I'm on some pretty, um, pretty heavy, a pretty heavy antidepressant. It's called Cymbalta, and I am cutting down. Uh, for those of you who know about Cymbalta, uh, it's prescribed principally for depression and anxiety, but also more and more often uh, fibromyalgia and other kinds of pain, I think. Um, it turns out that uh, I've been on it for seven years and it's only been just in the last three months that I have begun to taper off. Um, but it's only been really just before the fast that I took a big jump down from 60 to 30. And sh she suggested uh, in no uncertain terms, well she didn't suggest, she made it known in no uncertain terms, that there was just no way that we could unpick what was the um, withdrawal symptoms from Symbolta, which can be savage. Uh, brain zaps every, you know, like some people get them a hundred times a day. Um, um, incredible, incredibly um, dis uh, distressing um, symptoms um, coming off Cymbalta, uh, including weakness, pain joints, all, just a whole myriad of, uh, of, of, of um, symptoms, so much so that Eli Lilly, the manufacturers still don't have a definitive list of the the symptoms, and I su suppose, as with a lot of drugs, people um, uh, both respond differently to the therapeutic dose that they're on, and also respond differently when they're withdrawing. So the long and the short of it, you can tell where this is going. She um, insisted that I. Um, get off the fast immediately and though I was in no way 
bound to follow that direction. I thought until I get off the Cymbalta, and there's another drug too um, that I'm on, uh, clonazepam, which is also I'm also tapering. Um, I, f I, I decided that really that was perhaps asking a little bit too much of myself to put myself under the pressure of the withdrawal from both those drugs and the uh, ardu uh, the arduous um, days that you have, the difficult days that you have as a result of the long fast. Um, in a way, by, d by putting myself under that duress, that kind of triple duress, I was denying myself the opportunity to really experience the f the um, the effects and the side effects of the full fast in their simple, straight up <laughs> purity. Um, that sounds like a s justification for just getting hungry and going and, hi and, and breaking the fast. I was, I was very hungry, I, I'll be completely honest. But, um, no, no buts. I, um, I was obsessing about eating, especially about drinking something and, and something so, um, like soda, almost as if my body was craving the car carbonated effect or, or perhaps the salts or the, um, but at any rate, um, I, was cra I was craving so badly because I was feeling so poorly and I just wanted to put an end to that, um, um, to that nausea. Now, that being the case, so I, I've eaten today, I broke my fast. I just wanted to reassure you guys that I'm going to keep this channel open. Um, I hope you stick with me because I, as I said to you in yesterday's post, I am 100% committed to coming back and doing this long fast. I see it as a watershed in my life, as a, the chance at a basically a new birth, a new beginning. I know that might sound like sort of mystical language and coming from an atheist that might sound strange, but I really mean that in a completely human, um, completely, you know, and, and th like th within the experience of the human an animal, me as, as a human animal, I want to experience the um, dynamics, the, the pitfalls, the ups and downs, and the wonderful benefits uh, which I have read about for myself in this my 57th year. Um, perhaps it, it won't be now until the beginning of the, well, <laughs> in December now, it won't be until the beginning of my 58th year, uh, year I turned 58 in April. Um, but really, if you, if you stick with me, I'm going to come back with uh, more news about alternative diets, so that while I'm getting off clonazepam and Cymbalta, I'm going to experiment with different forms of fasting as a, pre a preparative to the big one, as training to get to base camp, you know, before, you know, uh, setting my sights on the summit, you know, the, the, the summit of... Um, of the mountain, um, um, I, you know, I, so I, I see the next few months as being that kind of preparation, that kind of training, and that's how I'm going to take it. So for instance, I'll be mixing it up, I'll be trying alternate every other day fasting to see how that goes, and I'll also be trying a thing called dry fasting. Now that is going to really shock some people, but I ask you to look these things up whenever I mention them. Look them up and get a source. I'm not going to give you those sources anymore. Nor am I going to give. I've, I've made another decision. I'm not going to give advice of any kind in a definitive form because I can't. There's no way that I can. If I if I can't uh, foresee the effects of my drug, um, the the drug regime that I was on, and how that impacted on my fast. I can't pretend to be offering advice to other people. However, I can be a locus of information um, in the sense that I can put forward ideas and um, urge people 
to find out for themselves and also just to be a, a living witness to how these things go, the failures and the successes. Okay, so dry fasting is when you take no water and no food. I'm going to do a three-day dry fast uh, in a couple of weeks and that should be interesting. Now dry fasting is something else again um, uh, and as I say please look it up. There's a Dr. Philemon, a Russian, who's written the definitive book on dry fasting. But if you just look up dry fasting and find a source, um, find the most scientific source you can. Find someone who's actually an MD, a doctor. Don't go with these self-style gurus who run shitfully expensive centers in California um, and say the most inaccurate um, things with this inflated sense of their own value and their own wisdom, quote unquote, um, leave them alone and go to doctors. Um, so Dr. Jason Fung, F-U-N-G, is a, a great source of information, reliable information, really, really good. He's a nephrologist, a um, kidney expert who has spent the last few, I've mentioned him before, and I've given a reference for that, for him. Another great source is Dr. Goldhammer. Those two names, Fung and Goldhammer, would be enough for you to get started uh, and, and then just t take you away from that. But I urge you, as a, a rationalist, uh, as someone who doesn't believe in any um, spooky um, supernatural interventions or, uh, or nor do I believe in any pie-in-the-sky myths about you know, the balance of nature and that if we only just find the right balance we'll all just be happy and completely healthy. I think that's total bullshit too. I do think that the that fasting is the natural nature's way of doing what we can to make ourselves well and therefore I remain committed to the process and I see this as just a tactical withdrawal until I get on top of my Cymbalta and my um, clonazepam and if you care to stick with me I think we can ha have uh, a valuable time together going forward so I'll leave you with that now guys and get back to you um, in very short order okay bye and all the best for those that are on still going with their fast keep at it and if you have any questions that you want to direct at me if I don't know the answer for sure I will come up. If you, if you ask direct questions, I will get back to you with um, a researched answer. Okay, bye for now.